So after you've completed your logbook, you're now ready to apply for part two, which is the architecture practice exam, also known as Hell on Earth. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this is my second video on how to pass the architecture practice exam. So last time I talked about the, my 10 tips for registering as an architect in Australia, and in that I kind of talked about how the architecture registration process works and hopefully if you have thought about registering as an architect you have gone to the AACA website or the um, Australian Institute of Architects website and um, had a look at their explanation of how the um, registration process will work. Um, so on the website they'll tell you um, the different pathways that you can take and when I first started there was I had no idea what was going on. I went to the website read through their material, still had no idea what to do, opened the logbook, uh, Excel spreadsheet, didn't know how to fill it out, um, and you know, it was just a very confusing and very kind of blind process. Um, but now that I've gone through it, I can tell you exactly how it works. So, first of all, um, the, the pathway that I took was the typical APE architecture practice exam um, process. Um, there's three stages. So part one is your logbook where you have to record all of the practical um, work experience that you have acquired over a two-year process, uh, to, over a two-year time period. You need to log a minimum of 3,300 hours um, over 15 areas of competency. So the competencies are just different skill sets that relate to different um, stages of a architectural project. For example, um, one of the competencies is to be able to brief um, an up, brief a client on a new project, um, and the hardest one is um, administering contracts on a building project that's going through construction. So you must obtain a minimum of 40 hours in each competency, and then there's also different levels of um, different levels of experience, such as executive, observer, and participant, um, and there's a whole like process to filling out the logbook. I'll probably save that for the next video where I'll go through exactly how to fill out the logbook, but just know that part one requires you to have 3,300 hours of experience over two years um, for you to be eligible to take the next part. Ideally, those 3,300 hours um, should be acquired after you have completed your master's degree of architecture. Um, Back in the day, it was just a Bachelor's of Architecture, but now they've split it into Bachelor and um, Master's of Architecture. So the criteria is that you must have completed your Master's of Architecture for some of your hours to count. For example, you can have 1,000 hours um, of your logbook that's logged um, before you finished your Master's of Architecture degree, and the remaining 2,300 hours has to be or should be after you graduated from your masters. Um, that's basically the pathway that I took because I had actually worked a lot before um, before attempting my uh, before attempting the registration. So I wanted to use a lot of those hours and put it towards my um, logbook, and then I worked about a year and a half um, to fill out the rest of my hours. In addition to your logbook, you also have to prepare a statement of practical experience. This is just a written version of everything that's in your logbook so that the examiners, your interviewers can read through that and understand um, what your experience is, where you are actually acquiring the competencies and what are the real life scenarios in your work experience that have allowed you to gain the knowledge of the competencies. Again, I'll go through that in a separate video because it's a bit complicated how you actually write and prepare that statement and I've seen it written in a, in a lot of different ways so I'll just show you the way I did it. Um, but once you have your logbook together, once you've written your statement of practical um, experience, you're now ready to apply for part two. Woo! Um, this is also the end of, probably the end of your study journey. Um, so congratulations if you've made it this far. Part two is the architecture practice exam, also known as Hell on Earth. Um, it's probably the most difficult part of the whole examination process. Um, you can find out the date of each exam on the AACA website. 
They are the authorities that manage the examination process um, nationwide for the entire country. Everyone takes the same exam on the same day, um, and you register, you apply for, um, to, sorry, you apply to take the exam on the AACA website. Um, there's usually two sessions a year, uh, one in April and one in August. Once you know the date of the exam that you would like to take, um, I would say prepare your logbook and your statement three months in advance um, from that date. The reason is um, about a month before the actual examination date, they will open up applications for that exam. And you only have a one week window to actually jump on the AACA website and apply for part two. If you miss that window, you have to wait till the next session in six months. So keep an eye on the AACA website and make sure you have your statement ready, you have your long book ready so that when they open for applications, you just send it straight in, you pay the fee and you're done. Um, I have had friends who were not prepared and I personally was not prepared. Um, and I almost missed my window. I literally applied a day before the cutoff date and I was so stressed out. So I'm just telling you this now so you don't stress out, prepare your logbook in advance. Um, and if you're missing a couple of hours that you were hoping to cover in the month or so before you lodge your part two application, just estimate it, they won't really mind um, as long as all the hours were completed um, before the application date. So, once you applied, um, they have about two weeks to review your statement and to review your logbook, and then they will send you a confirmation email saying, yes, you have qualified for part one, and now you, sorry, you have passed part one, and now you qualify for part two. Yes. There is about a month and a half um, between um, the application date to, um, to the exam date, so you have a good window to revise everything. Um, at this point, speak to your boss, speak to HR, speak to whoever you need to speak to to get a couple of days of study leave um, before the exam. In New South Wales, the Architects Act um, allows for study leave. I think you get two days a year, and that's specifically to allow you to take the practical exam and to take the interview. Um, in my workplace, we have been able to negotiate that up to four days of study leave. Um, so two of them will be used to take the exams, um, but you have two additional days off um, to then study. So I took those two days, um, the day before, the two days before the actual practical exam. And luckily for me, the practical exam was on a Tuesday and I took the Monday and the Friday prior off, so then I got a good four days um, without, worrying, without having to worry about work. Wait, that's not right, is that right? Yes. I got a good one, two, three, four. I got a good four days to study um, and prepare myself um, for the exam, and that was, mm, like, that was so helpful to have those four days. So I would, say to you that try and get the study leave if you can and if you can't use your sick leave use your personal leave use your you know annual leave whatever you have to do you know break a leg or something but definitely try and get a couple of days off right before your exam and i'm sure your boss will understand and if he doesn't he's a dick and you should probably leave that's a whole other topic um so the day has come for you to take your practical exam um a couple of weeks before your practical exam, they'll send you a notification of the time and location um, of the practice exam. Um, everyone takes it on the same day and generally at the same time, but um, you know your location will not be at the architecture registration board. It will probably at, be at some um, learning center with a bunch of computer rooms because all of the um, exams are now digitally based and you do it on the computer. So make sure that you check the, the date and the um, location and don't go to the wrong place. Um, the way the exam works is there are nine questions and each question has five multiple choice answers um, and each question only has one correct answer. They used to do negative marking, so what negative marking was, and you'll probably come across this term while you're studying. The old system, you answer a bunch of questions and you either get it right or you get it wrong. If you get it right, then you get a two points. If you get it wrong, then you get a minus one point. 
and you there were you know potentially multiple answers to the same question so it was a really definitely a really tricky um, way to test but now they have changed it to a more simplified question um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be easier because I found my test super hard um, be sure that there is only one correct answer in every question but just be quick just be careful which answer you choose because most of the time the multiple co the multiple choice answers are all very similar to each other and can be quite confusing so um, later on I'll post some information about how I approach the exam but you know just be sure that this is the format you can expect but prepare yourself for um, curveballs that might be thrown at you. Um, my tips right now is just study 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 prepare yourself make sure you've read all of the material and you've digested it and you understand the concepts and just apply the concepts and the logic um, when you answer the questions and you should be able to find the right answer. Once you finish your exam, you will then have, you will then have two weeks of um, waiting time where you can either celebrate that you have finished the exam or stress out that you <laughs> think you failed the exam or you know, a whole bunch of emotions will just come over you at that time. Um, just process it. Again, take some time um, to process that. Do not go back to work on that day. You're going to be a mess. You're going to be a nervous wreck. You're not going to be able to do any productive work because you'll just be worrying about the exam and how you answered it and what everybody else answered and all that stuff. So take the rest of the day off, chill out. You know, you've been studying for like the last six months, the last year or however long you've been preparing for this. You deserve a break. Just chill out. Um, after the exam, um, they will then mark everything. They'll take a bit of time to adjust all the marks and see if um, some of the questions were too hard or it was too easy. So the whole uh, marking process can take up to two weeks. Some people will tell you it's a couple of days, but I'm probably going to tell you it's going to be two weeks um, and just don't expect anything back for two weeks. Um, they usually um, for me, they posted the date of when they would be releasing the marks on the AACA website, so just keep checking back, or the AIA website, just keep checking when they um, expect to release the marks. So, after the two weeks, you will then get an email saying whether you have passed or you have to redo the test. Um, and if you do have to redo the test, you know, don't freak out, don't, you know, don't um, beat yourself up, you know, it's a really, it's meant to be hard, and it's meant to be hard for the sole purpose of trying to get the best quality of architects there are, um, so if you don't pass the exam, you know, try again and study again and just try and focus on the areas that you got wrong, so they'll give you a, a breakdown of which questions you got wrong and just try and revise the areas that you maybe a bit uh, maybe a bit weak on and you know maybe the next exam won't be as hard as the last one I know my one everyone said it was really really hard and I had a couple of friends who actually failed so it's nothing on them they're wonderful people they're wonderful architects but like the concepts sometimes are just really hard to wrap your head around on, um, wrap your head around so once you get your notification that you have passed part two it's now on to part three so part three is the interview and it's a face-to-face -face interview with two registered architects who have a minimum of five years practical practical experience after registration um, and that <clears throat> that process is not as scary as everyone makes it out to be like i always ask you know do you, people think the exam is harder or the interview is harder and i get mixed messages for me i honestly think the exam was so much harder because when you get to the interview there's a living breathing person across from you and then here to help you get through the interview they're not here to like be Severus Snape and just like be awful um, they're here to guide you through the questions just to make sure that you do know all the concepts um, um, well enough so that when you do go out and operate an architecture firm you know what to expect you know how to deal with these problems and you don't get yourself into trouble um, and you you know 
they're here to help. So treat it like a conversation with your senior or with your boss. Be respectful, but just be conversational and just go through all of the knowledge that you know you have um, um, to prove to them that you are going to be a capable architect and you're not going to screw up, uh, not screw up that bad. The interview is about a month after the um, results for the practical exam are issued and there are particular time slots for each interview. So there's going to be about you know, uh, 100 people all trying to get the interview out of the way. So my advice to you is as soon as you get the letter that says that you have passed, um, register for the interview straight away so you can get the first day or you get the second day and um, the earliest time slot you can get, get it over and done with. Um, there is no benefit to you for doing it last. Like that extra couple of days is not really going to help you and it's probably going to stress you out more that you know your friends or your study buddy has um, done the interview and um, you're still worrying about having to um, deal with the interviewers. Um, so definitely try and get it out of the way as soon as possible. I did it first day, first session. Like, oh no, sorry, first day, second session. Like I was probably the second batch to go through the interview and honestly that was, that was awesome. Like I just felt so free at the end of the interview um, and I knew I didn't have to worry about anything else unless I failed. Um, and then once you're done with your interview, again, don't go back to work. It's just not healthy. It's not going to help you or your employer um, for you to be stressing out at the office. You're going to stress everybody else out. So, um, you know, you do have an extra study day um, that you can take. So go out and celebrate with your family that you've finally finished the process. So once you have completed your interview, um, congratulations, you're done. Um, that's the end of the um, examination process and now you just have to wait for the results of your interview. Um, they're generally very quick with their interview results um, and the assessment is done by the two interviewers that you meet. Um, I got my results pretty much on the same day. I did my interview at 10 o'clock and I got my results at 5 o'clock. Um, my friend, she did her interview on Thursday and she got her results um, Friday evening. So she did have to wait that extra day, but generally it's like a day or two days wait. Um, so you get it pretty much straight away. Um, if you do fail this exam, um, the interview, it's okay. You just have to do the interview again. You don't have to do the entire process again. Um, and you just go in, you know, maybe the second time will be easier now that you um, have gone through the first interview, you know what to expect and you know it's not as scary as you think. Um, it really isn't, it's just a conversation. So even if you do have to do it a second time, like more than likely you will pass. Um, if you do pass the first time around, congratulations, you finally finish the registration process, you are now eligible to register as an architect and your, you know, your, your years of hard work, your years of study, studying, going through university, working have now culminated as you, um, in you being recognized as an architect, um, architectural professional. Um, and I think the best feeling for me when I finally got my results was being able to call myself an architect. I know it's a small thing for those people who don't work in the architecture industry, but if you don't know, if you are not registered as an architect, you officially cannot call yourself um, architect or use the term architect in any way. Um, so it's always very awkward when I try and in, <laughs> when I try and um, introduce myself to, you know, friends, families, or strangers. What do I do for a living? I kind of have to say in a roundabout way that I'm an architect. Like I am a graduate of architecture. Like I work in an architecture office, or I'm an architecture professional. But now I can loudly and proudly say, I am an architect. I will be an architect. Still have to pay the fee. Um, yeah, so congratulations. Um, go out, celebrate with your family, celebrate with your friends um, for a job well done. And it's definitely an achievement, if not the biggest achievement um, of your life to date, um, becoming a registered architect. And now you can officially represent the architectural community and 
um, go out there and you know do some good work. And if owning a business is um, what you've always wanted to do, you you can now go out and start your own architecture practice and be the next, you know, Zaha Hadid or Frank Gehry or John Smith if you don't have a good name. Um, I'm probably not going to start Eddie Ma Architects, but you know, I just have a really bad name. Um, doesn't have a ring to it. So that's it. After you are now eligible to um, register as an architect, you still have to fill out the application form um, and apply and um, make an application to your state um, architects registration board. Um, and for you to be officially registered, they have to pass your name through their um, annual general meeting. So I'm still waiting for mine. It's May now and their general meeting is June um, 19th. So I have to wait till then to get my architect's registration number and become logged onto their, um, their database and officially be an architect. Uh, once you do get registered, you will get your number and you can put that in a business card and hand it out and say, I am an architect. That's it, that's my quick explanation of my own registration journey. Um, next week I'll probably go into a bit more detail into how I prepared my logbook and statement of practical experience and um, for those who are looking to register soon, this will probably be useful for you to just go over how you have filled out the logbook um, and um, your statement of practical experience. Um, if you are finding these videos useful and you want to keep watching, please subscribe and I'll be posting more videos next week. Thank you. Uh, sorry, the date of the next um, architectural practice exam, um, which is... Uh, oh, this is so hard. Why is it so hard? It's just recording a video. Why? What time is it? It's almost 12. Um, and the basic requirements are you must have uh, 3,000 hours. 3,000 hours? Yeah, double check that. One second, please. Oh, yeah. Hi. I'm back. I am back. Um, so, yes, your logbook requires um, 3,300 hours over. I should probably do my research, shouldn't I? My exam was particularly difficult because the way that they had... Oh wait, I should go back. Rewind. <clears throat> Take two. So if you are interested, you're finding these videos useful, um, please subscribe and just follow me um, as I keep explaining my journey. Um...